We need your strength. We need your wisdom. And we need you to guide us in a significant yet profound way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so this evening, uh, yet again, this is our weekly leadership meeting, and I wanted to hear from you all to see, has the Lord spoken anything in your spirit concerning the ministry or anything that would be helpful to guide us uh, as we continue to move forward? Nothing here on my end just yet. Okay. Marlise, anything? Okay. Um, as uh, the only thing that keeps coming up is your international resources. Okay. And. Um, I'm not sure, <coughs> excuse me, in what capacity you have international uh, connections or people, but I keep seeing your international connections. That's the thing that keeps coming up. Um, and um, I'm not sure if it's for those that are coming into the United States or traveling back and forth. All I know is that your your international connections, and you all still need to get your passports also still. But I keep seeing that portion. Um, I'm sure um, into what capacity that will increase the ministry. But um, I I do know that um, I see a couple of people that do intercede for you all. But they they don't want to be identified. They don't want to uh, be put on blast, if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, those those individuals, it's about two people, and it's a third. But I can't really kind of place whether they there or not. I'm not sure if they they did. <laughs> Excuse me, in the church, or if they just um, just help the ministry, but um, they prefer not to be identified. They 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 do it secretly. But um, if you know who they are, they would be beneficial from outside of the ministry. They would be beneficial for like the for community work or or you know outside or you know the outside influence as opposed to the in, inside of the, the church influence okay anything pastor shinto um pastor Trey, today pastor chantel um emailed me the list with the names and um, I was thinking as I was driving home um, in addition to you know putting together who's gonna pray or what time and whatnot um, I wanted to put together like a profile for each person that I call and kind of find out what is it that they're looking to get out of this ministry um, what is it that they're looking to put into the ministry? Um, what have they gotten out of it? Uh, to kind of give, you know, all of us, um, especially you and Pastor Chantel as pastors, um, what is it that, you know, you can focus on to, um, I guess, better cater to different groups of people or whatnot? So I wanted to kind of like put like a couple questions um, you know, on a sheet of paper and kind of like when I talk to people, kind of do like a mini interview to figure out, you know, where they stand and what, where is it that they're looking to go and um, what's their focus point. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sounds good.
Um, first, I want to say um, I heard from Marcel. She said that um, she's at work and it's really busy, so she's not able to join us. So I told her I recorded so we can make sure she gets it. Um, but as far as me hearing anything um, concerning this, um, for me personally, the Lord was talking to me about better time management so that I can start getting uh, more accomplished because there's so much more that's coming up so many more um, opportunities that are becoming available. And um, I heard that for a, a lot of us, that the opportunities are going to become available, and it's about our time management. Um, we have to make sure that we're still getting in the presence of God, we're still hearing from Him and um, getting our instructions from Him, but also um, that we are giving enough rest, that we're eating healthy, that we're getting our bodies and our minds and spirit all in line with with God's plan because at the end of the day, if you don't have health, you can't do anything. You can't accomplish anything without health. So where we stand currently is um, some of us are doing well on the working out part, but not the eating part. Some of us are doing well on the meditating and studying of God's word, but we're not doing well on the sleeping part. Some of us are consumed by our careers or our jobs, but not doing so well on the getting in his presence part to get our instruction. And so um, I think we have to do more accountability. Um, I know that Pastor Trey and I reach out to you all, um, but I think out of the three of you all, um, I think Marlise reaches out to me more than anyone. and um, I end up getting the chance to talk to Marcel, whether um, it's a I call her and she calls me back kind of thing, or if she's at work um, or she's off work, and I think I, you know I don't know if she's off work because her off days rotate. Then she'll call me and say I'm off today, but I needed to talk with you, so you know let's get it in. And this one's gonna be a long one because I don't have to work, so we're gonna just we're gonna get everything out on the table, you know that kind of thing. Just um, Margaret, no offense, but we love you dearly, but we hear from you the least. I know I do. Um, I reach out to you, and I know that you're busy. I know that you're DIYing, and I know that um, you have been consumed by that because your house has been disarranged. If you're like me, I can't sleep well in my house when it's not in order. Um, so I do overstand, not under. I overstand because it's not a burden on me, but I, I overstand. So I want to make sure that we all are holding each other accountable that we all are reaching out to each other, that we all we are connecting to one another because there are some things that you all have been slated or, or selected to do, and some of it God gave you all, not us. And so we want to make sure those, these things are moving forward and that it's being done. Um, we are at the end of January. We have one more day left in January. We'll be hitting February really soon. Um, within the next seven to ten days, we need to have a price list. We need to have some stuff set up that what we're going to do on that Wednesday and Thursday before the Women's Conference in April for ETM only. Um, that's a Marlies and Margaret kind of thing. That That's, you know. So um, I apologize for my lawfulness, my, my, my being late getting the information, Sister Margaret. However, um, whatever day you're available this week to, for us to make some calls and get some contacts in with everyone on that list. Um, if you need me to, I can start tomorrow, but I would need to know what other questions you want me to ask. Um, I'm trying to think anything. I haven't heard anything else other than that. So that's the to take over. And Sister Margaret and Sister Marlies, and um, of course, when you hear this recording, Sister Marceau, um, everybody there, you two there, say amen. Yes, I'm, I'm here. I, I, I put myself on mute just in case, although okay. I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to be able to hear. But I, I don't mean to cut off, but um, I do have one other thing. Um, I, if you can, mm -hmm. give me a list of things that you have vision for this upcoming uh, April event and also um, training is good 
and 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 when I take it, when I say this, it's going to sound kind of weird, but almost like a customer service training, because um, <clears throat> as it pertains to the infrastructure, because we don't follow up like we should. We don't do the checks and balances like we should. And we don't set time for it either. And like, um, <clears throat> I know I used to make mention, you know, in the morning, if you need to talk, I'm here. I'm not one of those at 12, 1 o'clock, I'm asleep. Usually I answer for me, girl, it don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I know some people's schedules are to the point to where they're up in the, in the midnight hour. And if that's the time they, they have to work, or to do something, I'm willing to give uh, that time <clears throat> to do so, you know, to kind of work out, out what we need to work out. Um, but follow-up is one of those things because we, we address something, but we don't do a complete full follow-up on it after the fact to make sure it's still in place, make sure it's stabilized. Same type of thing, I mean, treat it like a nuclear reactor. Do your checks and balances. Make sure everything is in place, um, mm -hmm. because you know we do we do need that. Right, um, and we will set times for training. And one thing I wanted to say to each and every one of you all: um, this is a family, and we. I, well, I'll say it this way, Sister Margaret, you there? I'm here. Did you fall asleep on me? No, sir. You know, I need each and every one of you. Um, sometimes not as much as, um, I don't need as much of Marlies because I, I get a lot of that. But um, that's why I, I try to give it as much as possible to Chantel. But I need you both as much as possible. And I need you as well, Sister Marcel, when you hear this recording. But you know, Sister Marguerite, how I would call you sometimes randomly just during the week or during the day to check on you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I do that because, um, and I know I would tell Chantel to, to check on Marlise or, you know, she would do it on her or what have you, or I would check on her or what have you. Because whenever one of you drop on my heart, I want to reach out. Because today, I experienced one of the greatest losses of my life today. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I'm in a place like I'm kind of in this limbo, like really numb place. And the safest place in all the world should be, you know, amongst the, the family of saints. And, and I want you all to know that as much as possible, as the Lord will allow us to connect, we want to be there for you in your weakest and worst moments so that you can make it through life. None of you are alone. More than prayer. You know, if you needed something, uh, Marlise, you know, we would come to Atlanta just for that. Or if Marguerite needed something, I mean, we would come to Miami just for that. Because, you know, it's it's family. And... I want you all to know that's the type of relationship that we want to build. I don't want you all to think that we're just asking you to do administrative stuff. You know, I've seen a lot of people go down in a horrible place uh, because they didn't get the necessary outreach that was needed to keep them moving. If you hear what I'm saying, say amen. Amen. I don't know what, I don't understand. And so, so Sister Marguerite, Sister Marcel, Sister Marlise, I need you all to know that we we need you. Um, we sometimes it's not even just your prayers, but it's just to know that you're still there, because there's a lot of people that we've experienced through the years of just there, and and you really rely on them, and then one day in your weakest moment, you can't find them. And it's just important. That's what leadership is because we're co-laborers and we need each other. And, you know, that's just, that's my heart. And I just want you to hear that. You know, uh, 
Pastor Chantel is just transparent as she is with you all and you know, but me, you barely hear anything out of me concerning transparency when it comes to my personal stuff because I just don't deal with me. But after today, you know, I'm just in a place. And um and that's why I'm saying we need each other. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Very much so. All right. So, with that being said, I want you all to be led of the Lord. Uh, Sister Marcel, do you have anything that you want us to add uh, that you believe the Lord has told you to speak concerning this ministry or anything you want to impart? Um, no, I haven't heard anything of it yet, but I did miss the first part of your conversation, and I heard you say that you lost someone. Yes. Um, who did you lose? Um, since I was 19, I had a spiritual mother. Um, she's been with me through every transition, change, and uh, every weak point, uh, you know, in my life. And uh, today was that day. Mm. So uh, this is the person who first took me and told me that I could be somebody in ministry when I was still. Uh, screw up in ministry, uh, and then uh, so it was a really hard, uh, devastating blow. Well, um, yeah. brother, uh, uh, Pastor Trey, and I say brother, but now it's gotten to a level. We're gonna say brother right now. I understand your position as pastor, but um, before we get off the line, we're gonna we're gonna pray for you. That's the, this is true enough. It's been in my heart to do so, but tonight, tonight is the appropriate time um, because you have people who are truly connected and do care for you <clears throat> and want to see the best for you. The other thing is, on the pastoral side, at some point you're going to have to take the time, and I understand your schedule and the meetings and the this and the that, you're going to have to take time to assess who you have right now in your flock that can assist you in a way to where you can assign them something to help you out, assist you personally in certain areas that will allow you the time because you don't rest. You really don't. You get rest, but you don't rest. And that's one of those things that needs to be dealt with because true enough, even though the head is going through, the head has to be able to cover. The head has to be able to do certain things. And if everything is on your shoulders, and I understand <coughs> your wife, my old sister Chantel, assist and help, and she's always busy, but you do need someone who you can appoint to assist in certain matters, is because what's going to happen is your your ministry is going to grow. You're doing a lot of things now, but ministry is getting ready to grow, and you're going to need someone. And that person is going to have to know you in the ministry before it starts to grow. So I encourage you to see, even if <coughs> there's a diamond in the rough. Little assignments by little of someone whom you can really rely on that the Lord leads you for to you know to go to and to appoint. Okay, thank you. Can I ask you another thing? Is it um, and are you going home? Is there a funeral in Ohio or is it somewhere close to where you already are? Do you have to travel for this? No, it's something that happened in Atlanta. In Atlanta. Hold okay, on. Um, I'm sorry. What's the name? Now I know I'm getting into the business, but what is the name? If we could, let's not talk about it. Okay. 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 Well, um, if you should need anything financially uh, for me to send, uh, for you to get there or whatever, let me know. Um, 
tell me how much. Um, I'm really sorry. I don't. I'm at a loss for words. I'm really sorry. I really am. It's okay, and I, I appreciate the offer. Um, I appreciate all of that, and I appreciate you, your guys' concern. I just definitely need you all to uh, war with me in the spirit to get through this one. Amen. 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 So, all right, is there um, anything else on your heart that you all want to share that we all may be able to move forward accordingly? Yes. Um, well, I don't know if you uh, know Mother Elsie passed away as well. Um, I think it was Friday. Lisa's mom? Uh, yes, Lisa Elsie's mom. Mm. Um, so oh. if you if we can keep that, you know, um, the Elsie family as, as well, you know, as, you know, as other people that are passing, if we can just keep them in our prayers. Absolutely, and we will. And um, let's definitely lift that up, uh, Pastor Shinto. Um, so what I'll do is I'll try to um, get with Pastor Trey first thing in the morning to get the information as far as like what his vision is for that Wednesday, Thursday. And I can either type it up or I can tell you all, either or. But um, Marlise and Sister Margaret, we can um, try to get on the phone, Sister Margaret, while you're um, kind of driving to work and I can have it typed up and I can just email it to you. And that way when you, you know, get your time or whatever, get, get a moment, you can look at it. But, um, and Sister Marcel, we definitely want to make sure we include you in this process because in April, the women's conference is that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Pastor Trey wanted to do something that Wednesday, Thursday for ETM only to sort of okay. equip us to be able to and prepare to stand before the people on that Friday night for the outpouring and the spiritual healing that they're coming for that we'll be able to pour out to them. And so... Um, okay. We want to make sure that we get together and we can plan that. And we were kind of hoping that, you know, I'll, I'll be able to help a little because I have the women's conference that I'm still planning. I have um, a couple other things that we're still doing right now. Um, and so I want to make sure that um, you all are able or feel capable of taking the reins and sort of leading. And just if you need something here on the ground in Port Huron, let me know and I can take care of that part. Does that seem reasonable or fair? Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Okay. So, can I ask one to close us out in prayer? And as we're praying, let's just be mindful of all of those things that we were asked to pray about and those individuals. Amen. Amen. I'll start. Father, Lord God, uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, Father God, asking that you have your way in uh, Pastor Trey's heart and uh, Sister uh, Shanko's heart, Father God. Lord Jesus, you know what it feels like to leave someone very close to you because you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for our sin. And so, Father God, Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you would just have your way on the inside of him, Father God, for those things, his personality, and for those things that he doesn't show very easily to anyone else, God. You know, Father God. You know. So, Father God, we pray that you would just have your way in his heart. Father God, that you would comfort him. Father God, that you would strengthen him. And, Father God, that you would help him to understand and to know, Father God, that everything is that woman that God has poured into him. It is there, and that is the piece of him that she, that he still has. That part will never, ever die. And so, Father God, we ask that you would just have your way in the lives of each and every person that is affected by this loss and help them to understand that heaven is gained. Father God, we thank you so much, God. We thank you so much, Father God, for the legacy of love 
this woman left on this earth. And we thank you, Father God, for every pouring out of her spirit, Father God, for every one of her children that will stand, Father God, to have a piece of her left with them. Lord Jesus, we ask, God, that you would continue to have your way in the hearts of those that are bereaving at this moment and this time. Father God, we ask that you would comfort them. Holy Spirit, would you be a comfort to them? We ask that you would just have your way and that you would just help them to accept your will. Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you would have your way in their lives. Lord, we know that you will catch each and every tear, that it will not go unnoticed. Father God, we thank you so much, God, for this team of intercessors, for your people. God, we thank you so much, Lord Jesus, that in times when we feel weak, Father God, we thank you, Father God, that for each other and for the God that flows and works through each and every one of us, that we would be that pillar to help, help you stand, help one another stand. Father God, we pray that you would just continue to have your way in our hearts, that you would continue to have your way in our minds, that we, you would continue to keep us closely knit and connected to you, Father God, or Jesus, so that we know the right thing, the right action, and the right places to be, Father God. We ask, God, that you would just continue to have your way, Father God, and pass with your tell wife, Father God, as she comes with her husband during this time. Father God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would be there. Father God, that even if no words have even been spoken, Father God, that just the fact that she is there, Father God, is just all the comfort, Father God. Lord, we ask God that you would just continue to have your way, Father God, in this whole situation. We thank you in advance, Father God, for traveling mercy. We thank you in advance for provision, Father God, for getting there and safely back and forth. Father God, we thank you in advance, Father God, for the relief and for the peace that will be, uh, uh, that he will feel once he is said his goodbye. Father God, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would just continue to have your holy and your divine way, Father God. You know each and every, you know what it feels like to lose someone, God. You know what it feels like. And Father God, we thank you so much, God, for your glory. We thank you for your love and your caring and your compassion. And we ask, God, that you would continue to have your way, Father God, even to the midst of this, Father God. Lord Jesus, have your way, Lord. Help us to see from your perspective. And Lord Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and we give you all praise, glory, and honor. And it is well with our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we come to you today. Lord God, lifting up our brother, our leader, our shepherd, Lord Father, in Christ Jesus. Lord Father, we ask you right now, Lord God, to just continue to hold him and keep him. Lord Father, allow him to feel your presence even the greater. Lord God, you hug on him, Lord Father. Comfort him, Lord God. You said you sent the Holy Spirit to be your comforter. And Lord Father, allow the Holy Spirit to comfort him. Lord Father, you ease the pain, Lord God, and the sadness, Lord Father, that is in him. Lord God, restore it with joy. Restore it, Lord Father, with memories of pleasure. And Lord Father, allow him to uphold the teachings, Lord Father, God, and the encouragement, Lord God, that he received from someone who loved him dearly. From someone, Lord Father, God, that planted seeds of growth and encouragement. The seed, Lord Father, God, of courage. The seed, Lord God, of your love. Lord Father, we ask right now, Lord God, that you bring back to memory the words of encouragement. Allow it to be a joy. Allow it to bring him a smile. Allow him, Lord Father, to have memories that are pleasurable, that he can honor you with, Lord God, for allowing her to be in his life. Lord Father, we ask you right now, Lord God, to continue to grow him, strengthen him, Lord God. And Lord Father, strengthen his wife, Lord Father. That in his time of transparency, Lord Father, in his time, Lord God, what is sometimes considered to be vulnerability, 
Lord Father, allow him to have strength. Lord God, allow her to be his covering. Lord God, allow a greater love, Lord Father, that will bring a peace over him. And Lord Father, you continue to bless the household. Continue to bless, Lord Father, every no, every boat, every nail, all the mortar, the brick, everything about that house, the air that circulates through it, Lord God. You bless it. The water that flows out of it, Lord God, you bless it. Continue to allow, Lord Father, your anointing to travel out of that home. And Lord Father, you said a married man obtains favor. And Lord Father, you give Pastor Trey, my brother, Lord God, our brother, in Christ Jesus, our leader, our shepherd, Lord Father, Greater favor, Lord Father, wherever he travels and goes. Lord God, help him, Lord God, to have the vision to see how to allow him to load, lighten the load a little, that he may be able to focus on other things. Give him the person that he can rely on, Lord Father. That this ministry may be able to grow and flourish, Lord God. And Lord Father, we honor you. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Father. And Lord Father, for the other family member that has passed, Lord God, our family member, our family member in Christ Jesus that has passed on, Lord God. Heal their family, Lord God. Bring them peace, Lord God. Let them have joy. And if there's anyone in that family, any extension, any branch, Lord God, of that family that doesn't know you, Lord Father God, use this time and this moment, Lord God, to bring them to you. Use this moment to cause someone who is turned away from you to turn to you, Lord God. And Lord Father, bless this ministry, bless the endeavors, Lord God, this leadership meeting, bless the people that are involved, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Father. Lord God, you speak and you have your way in this particular situation. You guide us and lead us, Lord God, in how, Lord Father, the ministry can grow, how it can be strengthened, Lord God how it could be a benefit for the community.